B indicates that the set A is not a subset of set B. All right, so we just talked about that. To show that set A is not a subset of set B, one must find at least one element of set A that is not an element of set B. So over here, we said you could say four is not an element of set A, or you could say five is not an element of set B. That's why it's not a subset. Okay, so determining subsets. So here they give us an example determine whether set a is a subset of set b what do you think is it a subset or not a subset i would still say it is and i think you are right because you guys agree that all of these elements are inside of set b Okay, I, I understand, you know, it, it, both of them have boat, both of them have train and plane, but automobile, mm -hmm. why, why would you still say, I still says yes, because I, I, I did my reading, but I just couldn't understand why is it still a subset if B has automobile and A doesn't. Oh, okay, because a subset just means it has to be Oh, um, okay okay i get yeah. it I, as long as all of these are in there and hmm. here then that means it is a subset what about the other way around is b a subset of a no 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 that would, yeah that would be no because automobile is missing in set a so okay. that's why that would be a no all right very good okay all right now they now there's another definition this is called a proper subset the only difference is that it doesn't have the little equal sign on the bottom. So for it to be a proper subset, it can't be equal. So that's the only difference. It still says the same thing, if and only if all the elements of set A are elements of the set B, but A cannot be equal to B. So that's the only difference. All right, so let's look at an example. Uh, determine whether set A is a proper subset of B. So in other words, is A a proper subset of B? Just think of it as less than, but not equal to. Are all these in here? No. Oh, yeah, yeah, jazz pop uh, and hip hop, but not rap. Okay. Yeah, so we got jazz is in there. We got pop is in there and we got hip hop is in there. So do you guys agree that A is a subset of B then? A proper subset? Because they're all in there. All of these are in, in set B. But the other way around, that would be A? No. That would be A, no, yeah. Because um, classical is not in A and that's it, right? Classical. Yeah. Okay. So that's that. Um, determine whether set A is a proper subset of B. Is A a proper subset of B this time? Yeah. It's yeah. I think it's equal. Yeah, you do. They're equal, right? If it's equal, it's not proper because their letters are not in the same um no it doesn't matter that they're not in the same order as long as um for it to be proper it cannot be equal because it doesn't have the line underneath so these are equal to each other even mm -hmm. though they're not in the right order so it makes it not a proper but is it a subset yeah yeah so it is a subset but it's not proper a proper subset yeah so it's just a little tiny difference the only difference is that it cannot be equal and this one is equal so that's why it's not a proper but it is a subset all right um so let's keep going let's see what the next slide says all right so now we want to figure out the number of distinct subsets so let's um let's Think, let's give you an example. Let's say you had a set of A, B, and C. Let's count all the, oh no, I got disconnected. Let me re, reconnect the screen.
All right, so let's just say we had a set A, B, and C. How many distinct subsets are there? So let's start with the set of nothing. So you have this one, the empty set. Now let's, let's write out the sets that only include one element, A, B, C. Now let's include the sets that have two elements, a, B, A, C. A, B. A, C. A, C. And there's one more. I like the uh, B, C. The song, the intro. B, C. Yeah, B, C. And then the last one is the set that has all three. A, A B, C. Yeah. So how many total? One, two, three, four, five. Nine. Eight, sorry. Yeah, I'm counting eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So that's how you figure it out. But the easier way is there's a formula, two to the nth power. So two to the nth power, where n is the number of elements. So n eight. That is equal to the number of elements. So how many elements are there in the set? The original set. Three. Three, so that would be two to the third power, which is eight. So there's eight subsets. So you can figure out how many subsets there are just by using the formula, or you can actually write them all out. The two subsets that you you can always count on are the empty subset for sure for all of them, and also the the set itself. The original set is always a subset, and then the empty set. So those are the two. That you can always count on and then you have to figure out how many of the others there are so what if there were four what if i included d anybody know how many subsets there would be now four um oh that would be the number of elements so uh, how many uh, subsets? 16. yeah 16. two to the fourth oh, okay. power that's going to be two times two like four times right mm -hmm. That is 16 subsets. So I'm not going to list them all out. That's going to take a while because you would have to write A, B, C, D, and then A, B, A, C, A, D, B, C, B, D. And then you'd have to write, oops, all the sets that only have three elements. So there's, there's 16 total, but you could write them all out if you wanted to. All right. So that is how you figure out how many subsets there are all right <clears throat> what if they asked how many proper subsets which one would would we have to get rid of from all of these which one is not proper uh, is it a b c yeah that's the one that remember if it's proper it cannot be equal to hmm. so we, we would remove that one so the formula is 2n minus 1, because you're just getting rid of 1. Oh. So here it is, 2n minus 1. Two. That's for distinct proper subsets. Two. Oh. So let's say you had 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Anybody know how many, how many proper subsets there are? Um, 31. I think you're right. Let's see. It would be n is 5, right? Because there's five elements. So it'd be 2 to the fifth power minus 1. That's going to be 32. You're right. Minus 1 is 31 proper subsets. Um, so you just have to be careful if they say proper or if they don't say proper. If they didn't say proper, what would the answer have been? 32. 32. Yeah, it just would have been 2 to the 5th, which is 32. Mm -hmm. Very good. All right. So that's how you figure out the number of subsets or proper subsets. All right. Here's another example. Determine the number of distinct subsets. So notice that they don't say proper this time. They just say subset for this set. S-L-E-D. 
So, anybody know what that would be? 16. Yeah, good. So that is n equals four. So two to the fourth power. We don't subtract one this time because it doesn't say proper. So that is 16 subsets. All right, part B, they want you to list all the distinct subsets. So this time they want us to write them all out. So remember, you can always start off at the empty set and then start and then write out the ones that just have one single element in it. So what would that be? S L E D. S L E D. No, S L E D. D. All right, then the ones that have two subsets, I mean, sorry, two elements. S L S E S D S D. All right, there's a couple more that have two. L E L D. Yeah, very good. L E L D. I don't know if I can still give it a And then the last one would be that one, right? E D. Yeah, e D. Yeah, good. E D. Now we have to move on to the ones that have three subset or three elements. Yeah. S L E. Sugar. S L D. S L E. S L D. L D. And I think there might be one more with three. Um, L E D. Yeah. L E D, right? L E D. All right, very good. L E D. And then the last one would be all the one, all of them, right? All of them. All right, so let's count them. We know there should be 16, so let's see if we got them all. One, two, three, four, five, six. We're missing five, seven, one. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. You're right. We're missing one. I think we're missing. Um, oh, I, I don't know. I think we're missing one that has three elements in it. So we have SLE, SLE, SLD, SLD, LED. I think there's one more that we missed. And ED, yeah, S E D. Yeah, S E D. So I'm just gonna squeeze it in here. S E D. All right, so we got them all. 16 now. All right. Hopefully they don't ask us um to list out one that has five of them because that would be that would be 32 and that would be way too many. Okay. Um oh and we're done. That was quicker than I thought. Okay, so that one. This one was a little bit short. The next one's a little bit longer. Um, let's just take a quick look at one homework problem before we move on to the next section. So let me share my screen so we can look at just a homework problem before we move on. All right, so share screen. All right, we are in week two, 2.2 .2 homework. So here's 2.2 .2 homework. Oh, okay. Oh, obviously we have to look at the book. Oh, I forgot about that. <laughs> um, yeah, I think I have uh, the, the picture real quick. Let me see if I can look up the picture real fast of the book. Um, does anybody have... This looks like 2.1, isn't it? Mm -hmm. This looks like the stuff that we learned last time. Let me double check. Look at number 59. So look at 59. Because for the set D, D equals ABC, is A an element of set D? Would you say yes or no? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, A is, a is an element of set D, very good. All right, is C a subset of set D? Yes. It's kind of a trick question. Good question. Um, 
some, what do you think? Is that a yes or a no? Uh, I would say yes. You would think it is a subset, right? But it's missing the brackets. See how if it doesn't have brackets, yeah. it's not a set. So not a set. it's not a set, it's an element. So you're not supposed to say it's an element a subset it's an element of d not a subset because it's missing the brackets if we would have put brackets around it then it would be a subset so this one's a trick question it's supposed to be no all right and then part c see how this one does have the brackets mm -hmm. so is a comma b a subset of d yes this one is because it does have the brackets so this one's a so it's no no yes so if it doesn't have brackets, it can't be a subset. It has to be just an element. So just be careful with that. Uh, all right. Um, let's see. Is there another a was one? no. You said A was no or yes. Oh, I'm sorry. A was yes. Yeah. Sorry. So it's yes, no, yes. Yes, no, yes. All right. Oh, let's look at number 40. A set contains nine elements. How many subsets does it have? And then how many proper subsets does it have? So let's see if you guys can figure that one out. If you need to use a calculator, feel free to use a calculator. So do you guys remember the formula for how many subsets there are? Is it two, two in, let me see. Yeah, two to the nth power, right? Yes. So two to the n, two to the, two to the ninth power is? Ninth. Five, 12. Yeah, it's gonna be 512. So 512 is the number of subsets. What about how many proper subsets? 511. 511, all you have to do is subtract one. Very good. So yeah, the answer for part A was 512 and for part B, 511. Okay, um, that's pretty much it for, for this. Um, let's go ahead and start the next section. This one's a little bit longer, so we'll just do like, we'll do a little bit of it and then we'll take a break and then we'll come back and try to finish it. I didn't, I'm not using the PowerPoint this time. I'm using a different um, page of notes that, that I found somewhere that was, I thought was really good. So we're going to switch it up a little bit and not do PowerPoint for every single section. All right. So this one says Venn diagrams and set operations. So in this section, we will learn a useful technique for illustrating set relationships called Venn diagrams. Has anyone heard of a Venn diagram? I forgot. <laughs> it's just like Heard a, of yeah. yeah, it's like when you have a rectangle and then you have circles and the circles <laughs> represent the sets. So you'll see a rectangle usually represents the, it's called the universal set. So this is a universal set. <clears throat> a universal set is a set that contains all the elements for any discussion. So if we're talking about um, cities in California, or let's just say states in the United States, and this would be all the, all 50 states in the U.S. All right, and then maybe you have West Coast states, maybe you have East Coast states. Maybe that's how you're dividing them up. So that's just an example. All right, consider U. So U is everything. U is a universal set. So this is all the elements in the rectangle. Case one. So you have A and B. So we have to draw that. So let's draw the two sets. Here's A. Here's B. You should label them A and B. So in set A, we have one, two, three, and in set B, we have four, five. Is there any overlap between these two? No. No. So that means you should write the one and the two and the three 
over here, not in here, because that means that it's also part of B. And then four and five should be over here, and there is nothing overlapping. All right, so um, that's how you would write it. All right. Actually, you could have drawn you could have drawn the picture like this instead because there's no overlap. If there's no overlap, you don't have to oh, a bad circle. If there's no overlap, they don't have to touch since there's no overlap. So that's called disjoint 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 sets because there's no overlap. All right, case two. Do you guys see overlap here? Yes. So yeah, for sure. So now we have to draw the circles so that they overlap. Oh yeah. You'll put three in circle A. Okay. And then you'll put the one and the two in the overlapping space. Yeah. All right. Very good. And that is it. So as you can see, B. Yeah. Set set B has one and two in it. So as you can see, oh. there's. It's got the one and the two, and set A has one, two, and three, but only the one and the two are shared with oh, both sets. Okay. So it has to be in the overlap region. So that's called um, overlapping sets. You could call them overlapping sets. And then the final set, notice is that, that they're equal, right? So you could just withdraw one circle. Circle and call it A and B, and one, two, three. I'll just call those equal sets. And then the final case Oops, is, is there any overlap? I would say, yeah. Yeah, they have one, one element of three. The three, so A, B. So where should I put the three? I think in the middle. In the middle, and then the one and the two, anywhere over here, right? And yeah. then the four and the five would be anywhere in B, as long as it's not in the overlap region. All right. And what's that one called, case four? Oh, sorry, this one's called inter intersecting sets, intersecting sets uh, so this one see how i think i messed up on the overlapping one so the overlapping one should have been let's draw this one um see how b is contained in a so a is b is contained inside of it because the one and the two are in here and then the three is over here so the entire set B is inside oh. of A. So okay. <clears throat> I'm trying to remember how to, how, to, how to word that. I think they word it contain, contain sets. Let's just write contained sets because it's contained inside of it. The entire set is contained inside of the other one. Okay, okay. All right, so those are the four different cases. You'll either have two sets that don't intersect, so that's called disjoint. You'll have a set that's contained in, inside of another set that's called contained sets, and then two sets that are equal. And then you have just intersecting sets. All right, so let's look at what else they have for us. Complement, so here's another definition. The complement of a set is denoted by this little apostrophe, A apostrophe, that means complement. And it's a set of all elements in the universal set that are not in set A. So let's look at an example. So they give you the set A, and then they give you the universal set. So let's draw set A. So it's got A, C, and D. And in the universal set, which would be in the rectangle, it's A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H. So A is already A is already here. So B, we have to write B anywhere, anywhere in the rectangle. C, C is already here. 
D is already there. So now we just have to write the rest of them. E, F, G, H, right? Do I have them all? Yeah. I think I do, yeah. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, yeah. All right, so that's how you would represent the set A inside of the universal set. But how do we find A complement? Uh, remember, it says it's a set of all elements in the universal set that are not in set A. So does anybody know which, what would be included in the complement? Everything in the universal set that's not in A. What would it be um, B, E, F, G, and H? Yeah. Yeah, exactly right. It's everything that's outside of A. Outside so of A. Outside of A would be B, E, F, G, and H. So that's um, that's how you find complements. It's everything outside of the set A. All right, here's the word intersection. That means there's overlap, the overlap. And so this is a symbol that they use for overlap or intersection. It's like an upside down U. So let's do an example. So first let's draw the sets. So you have set A, set B. Uh, anybody know what should go in the middle? Uh, three, uh, two. Let's see. Three and two. Three. Oh, oh three, 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 three. three and eight. Yeah, three and eight, too. So you're right, three and eight. And then what should I put in this region? Um, one and two. One and two. One and yeah. two. Just one and two. And then what should I put in this region? Uh, one, seven. six, seven. One, six, seven. One. Oh, wait. I think we missed one. <laughs> one, Let's see. Did anybody see a mistake? Uh, oh, one. Yeah, we missed that one. So, so it should have been one, three, three and, and eight. eight. And then in this region, two. Just the two, right? Two. And in this region, um, six and seven. Six and seven. All right. So now we got it. And then what goes in the universal set outside of these circles? What are we missing? Four. Um, five. Nine. Ten. Nine and ten. Nine. And 10. Four. Four. Uh, I think it's one more, is it? Five. Yeah, okay, should be one more. Two, nine. Four, five, and ten. Seven. Oh, you got seven. Two, two. Looks like it's six. Oh, five. 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 Yeah, five. Yeah, five. So now we got them all. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. All right, so we got them all. All right, so that's the first part. Now we can find the intersection. Anybody know what the intersection would be? I'm just gonna take a guess. Uh, one, three, eight. Yeah, very good guess. Yep, one, three, eight. That's the intersection. So one, three, eight. All right. Now they want the intersection, but they want the intersection of the complement. See the little apostrophe? So first let's find out what's inside of the complement. Uh, anybody remember how to find the complement? It's everything outside of the circle A. Uh, four, five, and nine, 10. Yeah, and also six and seven too. Seven, okay. Yeah, so it's everything outside of A. So that's gonna be four, five, six, seven, nine, 10. 
And then they want the intersection with B. Well, B is one, three, six, seven, eight. All right, so here's B, one, three, six, seven, eight. So what's the intersection between these two sets? In other words, what do they have in common? Six and seven. Eight, let's see, six, six, seven, seven. I think that's it, right? Yes. Yeah. So yeah, that's it. So yeah, you're right. So the answer would be the set containing six and seven. All right, so first thing we had to do is find a complement that was this set, everything outside of set A. Then we had to find set B, which is just given to us over here. And then you just find the intersection of those two sets. That means what they have in common. All right, this one, this, notice that the, the complement is outside of the parentheses. So first, it's like order of operations. So you, first you do the parentheses first. So let's do the parentheses first. We already did it though, right? One, three, eight. So now we have to find one, three, eight, the complement of that. The complement of one, three, eight is everything outside of one, three, eight. What's everything outside of that? Two, four, five. Six, seven, nine, ten. Yeah, exactly right. So everything except one, three, and eight. So that would be four, five. Oh, wait, we've got two, right? Two. It doesn't have to be in any order. It can be in any order, but two, four, five, six, seven, nine, ten. So in other words, it's just everything that's outside of one, three, and eight. So two, four, five, six, seven, nine, and ten. All right. So let's say you find complements. All right. Moving on. Let's do one more. Uh, let's do one more example. Actually, let's just do like, let's just do up to this, and then we'll um, take our break, and then we'll come back and finish it off. All right. So a new definition is called the union. And the symbol is a U, that means union. So a union is the set that contains all the elements that are in A or in B. Basically, you're just combining the two together. So let's draw the picture again. A, B. Well, we start with the overlap. Well, it's one and six, right? Yes. All right. So one and six and then over here what numbers go here two four four and four and then over here would be three seven nine three seven nine and then in the universal set go down there five eight ten nine ten and nine Oh no, nine is already. No, there. nine is in B. Oh, nine. No. Yeah, nine is so let's just make sure we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yeah, I think we got them all. All right, great. So see how it says U? That means union. That means everything in A and everything in B combined. So everything in both of these sets combined. So you just put them all together into one big set. So one, two, three, four, six, seven, nine. You got it. That is right. So we just combined everything in A and everything in B together. So that's what union means. Think of union as two people getting married. When two people get married, they all their stuff goes into one big group. <laughs> all right. Um, uh, let's just do one more before we take our break, and then we'll take our break. So first thing we have to do is find the complement of A first. So what is an A complement? Anybody know? Everything outside of this circle? Three, five, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yeah, yeah, very good. Everything outside the circle would be three, five, seven, eight, 
9, and 10. So it's always a good idea to circle A and then only get the stuff that's outside of the circle. So that would be all the stuff that's remaining. All right, and then we have to do a union with B. And B, we already know B is, it's up here. One, three, six, seven, nine. And then remember union, that means you're just combining these two sets together into one big set. But you don't want to repeat, you're, not, you're never supposed to repeat elements. So does anybody know what would go in there? One, three, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yeah. And notice, notice you didn't repeat the threes. Even though there's two threes, you don't write it twice. You only write it once. So we got the one. We got the three, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And we don't repeat seven, nine, or three. So very good. That is the final answer. Very good. So this is going to be very similar, but this time you're going to find the B complement first and then do the union with that A. So we'll, we'll do that when we get back. So let's take a, it's, it's very similar to that one. Let's just jump to one of these. Let's do this one or that one. Let's just do F. All right, so first we have to find the intersection of A and B, and then we take the complement after. So first, let's find A intersect B, which I think we already did. Way, um, no, we didn't, okay. Um, you can just look at the picture and see what the intersection of A and B is. One and six. <laughs> one and six, yeah, so that's gonna be one and six. But then they want the complement of that. So the complement would be that. So now we have to figure out what's everything outside of one and six. So what's everything outside of one and six? Five, eight, 10, two, four, three, seven, and nine. Yeah, you got it right. So that's everything outside of one and six would be the rest of these, All right? So it doesn't have to be in any specific order. So it's just gonna be, let's see if I can write this out. It's going to be two, four, five, eight, ten, three, seven, and nine. So everything except one and six. All right, so that's how you would do the um, the complement of the intersection. So this this one is going to be similar to that one, but instead you're going to find the union first and then the complement. So let's just skip over because we still have a couple pages to go. All right, so this one says. Use the Venn diagram to determine the following sets. Um, that's weird. They don't have anything there. I think this is a mistake. They're supposed to have something here. So I can just make something up real fast. Let's call this, I'll call this um, A, B, C, D. E, F, and G. All right. So, anybody know what the what's in the universal set? Uh, C. Um, not quite. The universal set is everything. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah. That's right. That's right. A, G. So A through G. A through G. Yeah. I'm sorry. A, B, C, D, E, E, F, G. That's everything. everything. All right. What's in it? just said A? B and C. B and C. Yeah, B and C. Very good. So that would be B and C. All right. What's in the complement of B? So don't careful with the apostrophe. That's the complement of B would be A, B, G, and E. Yeah, everything outside of the circle B. Very good. A, B, G, and E. So A, B, G, and E. All right, now we have to find the complement of A first, and then we can do the union with the B. So what's the complement of A gonna be? A, D, F, E, G. A, D, F, G, yeah, A, oops, A, D, F, G, and E. Union with B, what's in B? 
CDF. CDF. And remember what the union means. Union means combining the two sets into one big set. A, C, D, F, G, E. Yeah, I think you're right. So it's got we got A, we got C, we got D, we got F, G, and E. And we don't repeat the D and the F again. We only write it one time. So that is correct. Can you explain that one again, the union? Yeah. So first thing we had to do was we had to find a complement. That would be this set right here, right? That's a complement. Everything outside of A. And we found it to be A, G, D, F, E. A, G, D, F, E. And then we have to do the union with B. So here's B, C, D, F. C, D, F, okay. C, D, F is B. Uh -huh. And then we have to take the union of these two sets. That means you just bring them all together into one big set without repeats. So we just combine this one with this one and we took out the double, so no more. Oh, F only one time, D only one time, and we added the C. So A, C, D, F, D, E, yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, so over here, it's going to be the same thing, but this time it's a complement of B. So let's see, what's an A first? A would be? Um, Whoops. B, C. B, C. So B and C. Union, what's in the B complement? So everything outside of B would be A, B, E, G. A, B, E, G. A, B, G, P. And then the union means you're combining them, right? Right. So what would be in the final set? A, B, C, E, G. A, B, C, G, and E. Yeah, we just merge. We just merge those sets into one, and then take out the duplicates. All right, very good. So that is it. And um, this one's a little bit different because it has the parentheses around it. So first, you're supposed to find the union of A and B. So first, let's find the union of A and B. That just means everything in here combined with everything in here. So what would that be? B, C, D, F. B, C, D, F. Yeah, B, C. But then we have to take the complement of that. That means everything outside of that. So everything outside of this. A, E, G. A, E, G. A, E, G. Very good. Yeah, A, E, G would be our final answer. A, E, G. And remember, the order doesn't matter. You can put them in any order you want. And that's the final answer. Oh, no, it's frozen. All right, looks like it froze, but um, let's see. OK, yeah, so it disconnected. Let me connect again. All right, last one. So now we have to find the, both the complements first. And then we take the intersection after. So let's find A complement first. Everything outside of A would be? A, D, E, F, G, right? A, D, E, F, G. So A, D, oops, A, D, F, what was it again? A, D, F, E, G. All right, so that's A complement. Now we have to find B complement. So everything outside of B would be A, B, E, G. All right, now between the, those two sets, anybody see the intersection, which means overlap? What do they have in common? The A. The A. Anything else? 
the E. And the G. Yeah, so your final answer would be A, E, and G in common, right? A, E, and G. I don't think, yeah, that's it. That's the final answer. That's what intersection means. Intersection means the overlap or what, what they have in common. Okay, so that does it for that page. All right, we have one final page to go and then we're done. So let's look at this final page. It says, given the following, determine the set C intersect B union A. All right. Um, so that's probably, it's probably easier to draw a Venn diagram. So let's just draw a Venn diagram first. All right, so that's a universal set. And then we have A, B, and C. So let's see if there's any, um, let's see, A is going to be odd and it's less than 10. What are the odd numbers that are less than 10? Uh, one, three, five, seven, and nine. Yeah, and then set B is the even numbers less than 10. Like two, four, six, eight. Yeah, so these two aren't gonna have anything in common, right? No. So actually, I should draw the picture a little differently. Are these two going to have anything in common? Um, A and C. Let me see. Yes. And A. Yes. I don't know. It looks like they will. And then E and then B. B and C will also have some numbers in common. So let's draw the picture more like this. All right, so this one is B. All right, so let's see uh, what A and, what is A and C? Wait, what does A and C have in common? A is one, one three, five. three, five, seven, nine. And this one says all the numbers are less than six. One, three, five. One. one, three, and five. Yeah, one, three, and five. And then in set A, it's going to have seven and nine, right? Yes. The odd numbers. And then C is going to have one, two, three, four, five, six. Two. So we're just missing the four. four. And two and a four and four. a six. Well, two and four. One, two, two and four. But that's also going to be overlapping B, right? Because B is the evens. Mm -hmm. so, so it's going to be two. Two, two and four two, in a little space. Four. And then we still have, um, that's it, right? And then we have six, eight. Eight. And that's it. I think that's it. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, that's it. All right, we got it. Oh, and then uh, in the universal set, we have nine. Oh, no, just 10, right? Yeah, just 10, looks like. Oh, no, it's less than 10, so never mind. Oh, so nothing. 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 Yeah. nothing. Okay, so now we have to do this. So let's start with the parentheses part. What's the overlap between C and B? What's the overlap? Two and four. Two and four. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's the overlap. So that's going to be two comma four. That's a bad two. Okay, two comma four. And then we have to do the union with A. A is one, Se three. one three, five, seven, nine. Nine. All right, very good. So now the union, that means union means combine all of these together, right? So it's one, two, three, four, five, seven, nine. Yeah, I ran out of room. Yeah, so that is your final answer. It's one, two, three, four, five, seven, nine. We just combine these two sets together. 
and that's your final answer. So that's how you do this. You always have to do the parentheses parts first, and then you have to do the union with set A, and that means combine these together. All right, I think the hard part was probably drawing the picture. And then once you have the picture, hopefully it's not as bad to do the second part. All right, let's look at this one. It looks like it didn't print out that good, but this should be a union. And an overlap. Yeah, and an overlap. Okay, so. All right, there we go. So first let's draw the picture again. Okay, so we got the U. Um, let's see, is there any, are they, are A and B and C, do they all overlap or? Looks like. Yes, they, they all overlap. Yeah. Yeah. What and about, they all got H in it too. H. Uh, okay, yeah, so that means they're all three are gonna overlap, so. Oh, that didn't come out right, okay. All right, so we got A, B, C. Let's let's do the three overlapping numbers first. So C and H. It's in the middle. All right, so C okay. and H. All right, now let's just focus on A and B. What's A and B have in common? Anything else? No, just that. Yeah, that that was it. Okay. What about A and C? Do they have anything else in common? Yes, A and C have F in common. F, right? And G. And G. Mm -hmm. All right. So F and G should go here. In the little open space. Yeah, because that's the overlap between A and C. Okay. Now let's see if A and B have any. Oh no, we already looked at A and B. How about B and C? B and C have A that overlap, a. and that's it. Yeah, just A. So the A would go here. Oh, uh, just connect. So your writing is frozen. Yeah, I think it's frozen. Yeah. Okay. So let me try. C was just um, A, right? I'm sorry, B and C. It just had the A in common. So I put it right there. All right. Now we have to fill out the rest of the stuff. So what's going to go in A? F. Uh, we already F have the A. F. The F and the G are here. So it's oh, just going to be, just gonna be B. B, B, B and J, right? Mm -hmm. B, and J. B and the J. All right. What's going to go in just B? Look like E and I. E and I. And then the final one, C, it's going to have A is already there, C is already there, F is already there, G is already there, H is already there. So C is already complete. Yeah. And then in the universal set, anything going the universal set? A is done. B um, is there. C is there. I think K. Disconnected again. All right, so it should be D, but it's the screen is not connected. So let me universal set. I see D is missing. So D needs to go here. Uh, what about E is there? F is there? G is there? H, I, J. Every, oh, and K. K okay. is, so we just have two in a universal set. All right, now we can do this problem. First, we do parentheses B intersect C. Anybody see what's in B intersect C? Uh, C, H, and A. A. C, H, and A. But then it's a complement of that, right? So everything outside of that. Uh, B, F, B, J, F, G, E, I. Yeah, everything else. So let's write that out. So that's going to be D, K, B, J, F, G, E, I, right? Everything except this. Yes. All right. Now we have to do that with the union of A. A is B, B J, 
F G. I can't see the other letter because you got it crossed out still. Okay. I'm just gonna copy this right here. That's A right there. Oh, I think it's frozen again. B C F G H J. Yeah, exactly. All right, then we have to do the union of those two stats, right? So, so you guys see it now? Yeah. All right, so now the union, that means we just combine it into one big stat. So looks like it's gonna be everything except what's missing. It looks like A, A is missing. Um, I think that's it. A, oh yeah, K is there. So it's everything but A, huh? Yeah, it's everything except A. That's the only thing that's missing from the set. So everything except A. All right, the last one. Um, so let's do the parentheses first. Let me just fix this. Union, intersection, union. So parentheses, a union B, everything in A and B would be everything there. So A, B, C, all right, let me write that out. B, J, F, G, B, H, E, I, A. Yes. All right, and then let's do A union C. That's going to be everything in A and C. B, J, F, G, C, H, A. Yeah, you got it. Sounds good. So B, J, F, G, B, H, A. Now we have to find the intersection. That means what's, com what's common, right? F, G, C, H, A. I see a B. I see an F and a G, a C, an H, an A, a J. That's it, right? B, J, F, G, C, H, A. All right, B, J, F, G, C, H, A. All right. So you just have to be kind of careful when you're doing this because you can make a little mistake and that will throw everything off. But that's the that's it we got through it oh there was one more but that's okay um we'll get to that next class because we're obviously out of time but you should be able to do the quiz and everything else now so here is the one last time